Welcome back. In this section, we're going to talk about first things first. I know at this point you're probably going, come on, Terry, let's move on to the 10 rules of position engagement. And I know we're going to get there. Trust me. But first things first, and this is a very brief section, but it's an important section to understand sort of how we got there, how we developed these 10 rules of position engagement. And so the first thing is, is as I mentioned before, Physicians are the target audience, and when we're talking about engagement, we can talk about just about any patient, excuse me, any, uh, any population out there. And the thing to remember is, is that because they're the target audience, we have to be particularly aware of what they value. That's true for any audience out there. So if you're looking at anybody who, you know, if it's, whether it's nursing engagement or administrator engagement or whatever it is, patient engagement, you have to start with what they value. And so for physicians, it's what's right for patient care. It's usually going to be the underlying theme behind a lot of uh, disgruntlement on the part of physicians because if they sense that somebody's not genuinely interested in patient care, they immediately aren't going to trust them. So that ultimately has to be the first step. And the next thing is, is some other things like the scientific method. Uh, we spend an enormous amount of time in our training uh, and uh, it it's focuses on scientific method. Our literature is built on the scientific method. It's this idea that somehow there's something out there that helps guide us in our care rather than just sort of our opinion. Now, don't misunderstand, uh, the anecdotal experience is actually extremely important in developing a physician's uh, knowledge base. But having something to build on, particularly in terms of the literature that's available, is also important. In fact, actually, it's probably one of the key drivers of the 20th and now the 21st century in terms of, of healthcare development and medicine in particular. Uh, quality and patient safety, getting back to that, what's right for patient care, if they don't, physicians sense that quality and patient safety hasn't been considered, they tend to be very distrustful. And so engagement on the part of physicians is going to have to have something uh, related to uh, quality and patient safety. Autonomy and independence, uh, you know, we're, we, we tend to be a fairly independent uh, group of professionals out there, and, and we always have been since our beginning. Now, everybody thinks that that's changing because physicians are becoming employed, but I'm telling you, it's not changing. This is still very, very valued. So it's something to keep in the back of your mind when you see that, and that is, is tap into that, and you'll find that physicians are readily available and willing to be engaged when someone's uh, helping uh, support their autonomy and independence. Uh, the relationship with nursing, uh, that relationship is very tight. You know, and people who cross that line and try to get in between physicians and nurses or try to use one against the other, I think are really uh, on thin ice. So physicians are entirely dependent on nurses uh, in terms of the care that's being provided. So physicians are seeing patients, making diagnoses, developing uh, treatment plans, and very often it's nurses who are implementing those plans. Uh, we know, physicians know, that these plans aren't going to be successful unless that communication uh, is working. If there's anybody trying to get in between the physicians and nurses uh, relationship, uh, they are going to be created, or be creating a, uh, a room for a lot of distrust, and that's not the way to get engagement. So, working with both groups and being honest and transparent with both groups about what our intentions are is going to be uh, very helpful. And then the professional culture in general, uh, it's a, it's definitely a, uh, there's definitely a professional culture out there, and if you uh, think you can get in and uh, in, just walk into that uh, culture and, and automatically command attention you're sadly mistaken. You have to have respect for the culture. You have to understand uh, the people who are driving the culture and what are the underlying principles. But we just discussed a number of them just on this list. And so keep that in mind as you go into these uh, these discussions with physicians, particularly if you're looking for physician engagement. Because if you don't, you're going to quickly find out that uh, engagement is not there and it becomes disengagement. So let's talk about disengagement. You know. Uh, this has to be addressed first, and I talked about that earlier. And it just you probably thought, like, well, the whole talks about engagement. It's like, actually, we have to talk about disengagement first, then we can focus on engagement. And so, this to me, disengagement is really a distracting engagement. And I'll give you an example. Imagine yourself you're driving down the road, and you can see coming up some flashing lights, emergency vehicles, and there's a line of cars and brake lights and everything, and and you're saying to yourself, okay, there's probably an accident up here. I have to be careful. I have to pay attention to the road. I have to slow down my speed. I have to be looking for emergency medical uh, personnel stepping out into the road, looking for policemen stepping out into the road, being very, very conscious and straightforward. And you have to be fully engaged in making sure that you get through that particular area. 
and not be disengaged at all. And then what happens? Just as you get to the accident site, yep, that's right, you can't stop. You just have to turn your head and look. You become disengaged. That's a distracting engagement. You're engaged in that thing, that car accident here, the rollover motor vehicle collision, you know. Here's a bunch of emergency medical personnel out there helping. But what you can see is there's a lot of cars stacked up along the road. you got people standing there on the side. I mean, just everybody's sort of focused on that. No one's really focused on everything else that's happening around them, and therefore the risk for further uh, accidents goes up pretty highly in these situations because there's a distracting engagement. Same thing happens with physicians. If something is distracting them, it's really difficult to get back to this idea of engagement. And so what we're going to do, and we talk about the 10 rules, and I promise you we're going to start in the next section. The first two rules are about disengagement. They're particularly focused on this aspect of disengagement and about how to avoid disengagement. Because once disengagement is in sort of engaged, that distracting engagement is engaged, it's real difficult to focus on anything else. The, the other rules, 3 through 10, are almost meaningless because uh, you're so focused on what just became disengaging. And I'll give you some better examples of this as we go along. But, but the idea is, is to remember that's the key piece. Stop the disengaging uh, piece of it, then move on to engagement. And the other thing is, uh, what's driving this? Well, it's just basic brain function. Disengagement is very visceral. It's very emotional. Um, once we, it happens to us, we don't want to let it go, you know. Uh, whereas engagement is a lot more cognitive. It's much more rational. And that's where we want to get people. But once we've engaged that visceral, that more emotional part of, uh, of uh, the distracting engagement, it's tough to get them over to that cognitive rational piece. So uh, start with focusing on things that you can do that prevent, avoid, or mitigate disengagement. And when we go through this course, you'll see what I mean when I give specific examples of this. So as before, any questions, feel free to contact me. If not, we're going to move on to the 10 rules of physician engagement.